Lagrangian of a simple pendulum. So we've got here the, the pendulum uh, of the length L with the mass M and the variable in this case would be our angle theta. So first we have to derive the Euler Lagrange equations of motion. Yeah? We write coordinates x and y in terms of our length and the uh, angle theta. So we write x as a uh, L times sinus theta and y as uh, minus L times cosine theta. And the system of coordinates starts, uh, as you know, it starts over here. We find the time derivative, basically x dot and y dot, so just take time derivative of L times sine, sine theta and uh, minus L times cosine theta. We get these two expressions. And now having x dot and y dot, we can find the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is basically 0, 0,5 times mass times velocity squared. And in this case, velocity squared will be, we have two components, x dot and y dot. So it will be x dot squared plus y dot squared. Just insert these two uh, expressions here and we get m over 2 times l squared times theta dot squared. Now, uh, we also need a potential energy, potential energy, mgh, uh, in this case again, as we are taking the uh, system of coordinates starts with, starting here, our potential energy will be minus mgy and will be minus mg l cosine theta. So now we can write Lagrangian l uh, uh, as uh, t minus v, insert t, insert v, obtain this expression. So all what we need now is basically insert this uh, Lagrangian L in our uh, uh, Euler Lagrange equation of motion. We have here derivative of L with respect to Q dot on Q dot Q in this case is theta and uh, derivative of L with respect to Q. So Q dot will be theta dot, Q is theta, take derivatives of L we obtain this expression and here we have a time derivative of m l squared theta dot the only uh, variable in this case is theta so we m l squared uh, we take them out of the bracket and we obtain m l squared theta uh, dot dot so it's basically uh, the velocity Velo i'm sorry the acceleration and by simplifying we can obtain this expression. This is our Euler-Lagrange equation of motion and we have to solve it. So how we, how do we do it? Let's first import some packages which we'll use. Import numpy and we also need to import a package for solving an, order, an ordinary differential equation. However, here we have a second order order differential equation that's why we first have to convert this equation into a system of first order equations how do we do it uh, we replace theta dot by omega omega where omega is the angular velocity so the first equation will be theta dot is equal to omega and then of course uh, second deriv second time derivative of theta will be first derivative of omega and we write it here in, uh, in the second equation so omega dot is equal to minus g over l times sine theta so since we have a system of equations we define the vector uh, with variables theta and uh, omega so now we have two variables theta and omega time derivative of of theta will be omega and time derivative of omega is this right hand side so let's define it uh, let's call it pendulum so uh, what we have we've got vector y as an input t time l and g l and g this is the length and g is the gravitational constant yeah? 9.8 so theta omega our two variables 
and we if we have our vector y we can find a time derivative of it as as I said before omega and this is the first one and the second one minus g over l times uh, sine theta and return divide d so now we have to define our parameters initial parameters which we have that will be as i said uh, length l l uh, let's write one and gravitational constant g let's write 9.8 define initial conditions initial conditions means basically our initial variables so we have here two variables theta and omega so we have to define uh, y0 we have to define both of them so let's say initial angle will be 90 degrees so pi over 2 and initial angular velocity let's set it equal to 0 now we have to define the time domain uh, it's basically t from uh, we use the function lint space it's from 0 uh, till 10 so we just create this, the points from 0 to 10 and we create 101 points and now we have to solve the differential equation so we use our function uh, our uh, from the package on the int pendulum y0 is the initial uh, condition t is the time domain arguments and our length and gravitational constant g so now the system of equation is solved now we'd like to plot the results this package we need for plotting and we plot the solution so as x-axis we plot time and y-axis we plot let's plot the first theta so it will be zero let's label it so that we know which curve is which theta and color we can also define the color of the curve um, green uh, we can plot our omega so we have to change it to be the first variable was theta the second variable is omega change the label color on the legend maybe let's plot also x-axis and uh, y-axis so now let's plot it so this is the results we obtained the green one is the th theta uh, blue one is omega we see here is no dissipation because we don't have any damping we see the initial conditions uh, theta starts at 90 degrees and the initial velocity is zero and we see that when our uh, theta is zero so it means the the mass m is located at the lowest point here so this line is actually basically vertical so at this point we have the maximum velocity and when our theta plus 90 or minus 90 degrees so the when the angle is maximum our velocity will be zero now if we increase the length of the pendulum let's say instead of one right ten we see that the os that the frequency 
uh, of oscillations decreases and the amplitude of angular velocity decreases as well. The same effect can be observed if we play with the gravitational constant g. So assume we are on the moon with you and we use the gravitational constant of the moon 1.6 so we see here that the frequency of, of oscillations has decreased and the amplitude of angular velocity, the blue curve, has decreased as well.